Let's take this technical elevation and turn it into a presentation drawing. I'm going to drag and drop this into Photoshop. It's a big A1 drawing, so we're going to import it at 300 pixels per inch. And it's two elevations with a title block around it, so we don't want all of that other stuff. We're just going to work on one at a time. So I'll crop it down to this image crop. And so we can see what's happening better, we're going to put a background behind it, layer, new layer, and we'll call this background. Bring this to the bottom, and I will fill it with a white bucket. So now we can see a little bit better what's happening. So because it was a technical drawing, it has some of those technical things, it's got these height dimensions, it's got annotations. I could of course not use those, I could have saved this image without those, um, but we're not going to make a big deal of those at the moment. Uh, we are in fact going to use those to understand height, so when we bring in some of our billboards we can understand how big they should be. Now what do I have here at the moment? I've got some images we're going to put some plants into this and we're going to put some people into this. So I'll start by dragging and dropping this magnolia. Place. I'm going to bring this to the front. So it sits in front. How big do I want it to be? Mm, I want it to be bigger than the little roof, smaller than the big roof. Edit, transform, scale. I'll bring that down. I'm holding shift to ensure that that doesn't... Um, change size more than I want it to. And there's a box garden in the middle of this area. And so I want it to sit right in front of that door. Now I've only got one of these images and what happens when I want to have two of these trees but with one image? We don't want it to look exactly the same. We're going to copy it but then we can edit it slightly. Layer, new, layer by copy. Next, drag this over here. So what could we do to make this a little bit different? Well, we can change the scale. So let's make this one a little bit taller. We could flip it. Edit, transform, flip horizontally. We could rotate it slightly. So it doesn't just look like a, a mirrored version. And we could start to edit it. Now in order to edit it, I need to rasterize this layer. I want it to hide underneath here, so I'm going to chop off the bottom. So that's sitting at ground level. And I could change the shape. It already looks different, so I'm not overly concerned, but maybe I can get rid of some of this information. Maybe I can get rid of one of these branches because the branch shape is so identifiable. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. I like this one for quick and fast work. I'm going to chop off this whole branch. And I'm going to have to do this a little bit carefully. That mostly worked, and now I'm going to need to fix that up just so it looks like there's a continuation of a branch here. So I'm going to select the shape where I'd want that branch to be. And I will redraw that by using a couple of different options. One will be the clone stamp tool. So I want to pick up, let's make that a bit smaller. I want to pick up an area and I want to paste that surface into that area. Now it moves along with me so I need to redefine that constantly. And because I've marqueed the area where I'm redrawing this, it doesn't um, it doesn't look horrible. Now, 
I'm using this rather than just the pen tool because it gives us a, a texture, it gives us a fill, it gives us a pattern in that way. So that works well for what we're trying to do. Uh, but it's not necessarily accurate or true in terms of the way that it does light. So I'm going to need to make it darker as well. So then I can do that with a pen or I can do that with a, a different tool again. So in this case, I'm going to use my burn tool. Now I need to make this much, much smaller. And I'm just going to burn the bottom of this branch so we're getting the shadow that we see replicated over here. Now it's only 6%, which is why it's doing it very slowly, and that's cool. Control D, deselect, and already that looks fine. I don't need to spend much more time on this. Maybe it's just a little bit too chunky there, but you know not a massive big problem. If I wanted to adjust that I could. I could grab this area for instance and stretch it. just to try to disguise that if I wanted to. What else? I could cut some of it out because it is transparent after all. All right, and I could give it a trim. I could trim off some of the branches, some of the um, flowers, some of the leaves if I just wanted to take away some more consistency with the other side. Now this is being pretty pedantic and not at all necessary. We're just having a look at what's possible. So maybe we take these ones off. That wasn't very careful. Let's fix that up. All right. So we've made some small adjustments. Now we've got two trees. They are the same picture, but they look different enough that it's not disturbing me too much. Let's just have a look at this area here. Yeah, that looks fine. All right, so what's next? Maybe we want, want to add some people. Now, I'm not going to do a whole lot now just because I don't want to, it to take too long. I'm just trying to show you some examples. So let's do the same thing with people. Now, with trees, the tree can be any size we want, but with people, we sort of need them to be within a certain range. So let's find some people. Now, one of the things that we want to look at when we're importing a person is how do they sit, particularly in this type of view, in two dimensions. This is a flat view. Now, of course, uh, people aren't necessarily flat. If it's a photo, it's taken with a, a camera, and so it's creating perspective. So we need to particularly understand how feet work, understand what perspective should look like. So if we've got people that are walking uh, together, if we've got people that are walking off into the distance and so they go further up onto the page, then that creates a bit of an issue. So we have to be a little bit thoughtful with how that works. And of course we can uh, edit those if we want to. So let's take this one, for instance. So we see that the line of where people are standing is inconsistent. But they're separated, which would allow us to um, to cut or to crop them more. Let's have a look at this one. These three women are inconsistent again, but they're also joined, which means it's going to be harder to be able to maybe pick them up, move them up or down. Let's have a look how that works and if there's going to be a problem with that one. So I'm going to open this with Photoshop. Thanks, Vinex, which now doesn't do this anymore. And I'm going to select, copy, and paste. Now, how tall should these women be? 
if this was a normal type of house, let's just grab this for a second, and we're going to scale them down, transform scale. If this was a normal house, we could assume that a door height would be 2.1 meters. And if we were to say that these women might be 170 centimeters high, just as a standard rule, then we could maybe say that they need to be about this big. But if that door was higher, which it is, 2.4 meters high, then that might change the rule of how we do this. This wall here, this door here is 2.4, this one here is 2.1. So that would help to us to know how big we should make it apply. Now the great thing about elevation as opposed to perspective is it doesn't matter where I place these people. So if I'm using this as a rule, another way of course would be to drag it across and the reason why I kept these elevational heights is we can see 15.9 Let's use this one maybe 13.8, 15.9, so that's 2.1, right? So we've got the scale about right. Now I can place them at the door, and we see that they're not, they're not going to fit at the door, or we can place them all the way down here, and they're still going to work, uh, but we see that there's an issue with the angle. There's also an issue with this image, where we need this surface, so we're going to forget about the people for a second, we need this surface to be replicated so it looks like this decking is running all the way down to this surface. How could we do that? Let's go back to our image. We'll create a marquee over the area that we want to copy. Lay a new layer by copy. What's another way we could do that? We could just scale it, transform scale, and I'm going to stretch this down until it hits our ground level. Control D. Now effectively, we could have the, oh, let's go back to the correct layer. Ladies. We could have these ladies standing here. Now that could work because they could be up onto the walkway, except they're backwards. So let's flip it, flip horizontally. That makes no difference to the image. Uh, if there was maybe some writing, uh, the Nike symbol, maybe that's a bit of an issue. Uh, I can't really see any of this writing here. It doesn't matter that much. So they could both be standing on the ramp at some point, and this lady here could be standing at ground level, and it's no longer an issue. Otherwise, what could I do? Maybe I could stretch her legs a little bit if I wanted them to all be at the same level. Let's do that just for fun. Select select as high up as we're willing to go. So I can select all the way up here if I wanted to. Edit transform scale. Stretch her down. Let's do that again. Uh, the bigger, the longer area I select, the less it distorts. Scale, and let's bring her down as well. So now they're all standing at the same level. And so this is how we could start to create a presentation drawing. Now let's have a look at one more before we finish. What about a background? What about a a sky or tree or landscape background. What do we want it to look like? In this particular case, based on elevation, we have a lot of potential sky. Maybe we have hills in the background. Let's try to find one that's appropriate. Why don't we use this one? And we might chop out this final edge here. So let's grab that. Now I could stretch this if necessary. I could scale it or stretch it. In this case, I'm going to stretch it. And I'm going to place this above the background and below our 
um, view. Now, what do I need to do? I need to understand where should my horizon be? Well, the horizon is slightly subjective when we're talking about an elevation. Where do I want the sky to be? Well, that sort of depends on the background as well. Do I want to see all this grass? Again, not really. It's not a very good scale representation. So I'm going to scale this image so I'm seeing less of that background and seeing more sky. And that sits slightly higher. And like I said, I probably don't want that immediate background. So we're going to create something more like that. And we're going to layer up maybe some of these images until we get something that works with what we're trying to create. So let's try that again. Now let's try to find one that has more background, more distant background maybe. Let's do the same thing with this one. Great. And although there's people in this, if I was to bring it to the front, <laughs> there's some people there, they're effectively hiding behind the house. So we're not going to have that problem. And now what we can do, we'll turn that one off, we don't want to use that one. And I'll grab uh, my, I have to rasterize the background and then I'll just delete out what I don't want to see. So I don't want to see any of this stuff here. Of course I could delete it or I could mask it. There's a few different options. I could bring this to the foreground and then cut out the bit that I don't want to see. So maybe we cut out everything above this. Let's be a bit more particular. Select inverse and I'll delete. And then I'll put some more white back in here. Maybe we'll wash out a bit of the background image. And then once we're finished with it, maybe we want to get rid of all of our other stuff, all of our lines, all of our levels. So we could delete that all out. And maybe we could do that a bit more, bit more carefully. So it's a little bit cleaner than it was. So presentation drawings. Uh, what could I do to make it better? Maybe I make the a ground black, make it solid along here. So rather than sitting on a white base, let's create a new layer. And we'll make this black. just to give a bit more definition to it. Alright, there's a few more things that we could fix up, uh, we could do with a bit more time, but that's fine for now.